welcome everyone. I want to welcome everyone to today's session. The topic will be take your job search to the next level. Tips and guidance from Handshake and from Deloitte. We hope that you are enjoying our credential month. I'm Robert Owens, the Director for Workforce Initiatives here at the Greater Washington Partnership. The Capital Collab is an action-oriented partnership of business and academic institution that develops the talent needed for jobs here in the Capital Region. We work with businesses and universities across the capital region like yours to help students gain in-demand skills they need to get the most out of their fields. Now, the Digital Tech Credential Program is free to all students at participating CoLab universities. If you're interested in joining, please feel free to visit the capitalcolab.com or reach out at colab at greaterwashingtonpartnership.com. I now would like to introduce our speakers for today. Uh, we are joined by two exceptionally people who are excited to be here. We have Christina Cruz Vergara. I um, hope I said it correctly. She serves as the Chief Education Strategy Officer at Handshake. She's leading efforts to ensure greater and more equitable student career success. She's recognized as a change agent within the field of career education and is often referenced in national media. She has digitally contributed through pieces. She's led trainings and consulted extensively with colleagues across the nation and internationally. Christine has held senior level positions and board roles at multiple institutions and organizations, including Wesley College, George Mason University, Georgetown University, George Washington University, the National Association of Colleges and Employers, and the American College Personnel Association. I'm also joined by Scott McQuillian, who currently serves as a National Talent Acquisition Leader at Deloitte, where he has responsibilities for leading the US campus recruiting strategy and programs, as well as leading the recruiting efforts for the US and US India tax practice. Prior to joining Deloitte over 20 years ago, Scott worked in a variety of roles in higher education, including college admissions, academic advising and career services. Scott's 25 plus years of service have always involved working with college students and assisting with their college exploration and professional development. Scott is the current president elect of Beta Alpha Phi and also serves on the board of directors for the National Association of Colleges and University. Scott is a graduate of Central Michigan University where he earned both his bachelor's and his masters. So again, want to welcome both Christine and Scott. I guess you can turn your cameras on right now so we can make sure we see the 11 faces and get everyone started. So I wanted to start off first with Christine. Christine, wanted to find out, you know, from our audience of a lot of, you know, college students across the capital region, what is Handshake and why do you feel students should use it? Sure. So Handshake is the largest early career talent network out there. We partner with over 1,200 universities and colleges, many of whom the students on the line today attend, uh, to help connect their students to over 550,000 employers to about 8 million active students that are on the network. So we have internships, we have jobs, we have lots of opportunities available. And more importantly, you don't need experience, you don't need prior connections, and there's no luck required to use Handshake. We're literally sort of the first step to help you build a lot of those aspects that are gonna be important for your job search process. Great answer. So next question, why is it important to update your profile? What does this drive in? What are some of the critical sections you should fill out from a student perspective? Sure. So you hear often, probably from your career center, or you might hear from Handshake directly that it's super important to fill out your profile. This is critical because students who complete their Handshake profile are five times more likely to get a message from an employer. So this is huge. Employers are on Handshake proactively looking for talent. And when you complete your profile, like filling in the type of job you're interested in, are you interested in an internship or a full-time job? filling out the industry or role, job roles that you're interested in, filling out your geographic location, for example, right? These are some of the really key areas of your profile that you don't wanna miss, that you wanna make sure you're adding in there so that when employers on the other end, like Scott, are looking for you as a student, they're able to find you and they're able to send you messages to encourage you to either meet them at a virtual fair, attend one of their virtual events, 
apply for one of their positions, right? You don't want to miss out on that because you didn't fill out your profile. So that's all within your control. Make sure to do that. I always encourage students to also add your experience so that when an employer looks at your profile, they can actually see these are some of the previous experiences you've had. And unlike a resume, you don't have to keep it to one page. So you're able to put a little bit more information about not only the part-time jobs, internships, experiences you've had, you can also add in your coursework or projects that might also bring to life the types of skills that you've been able to acquire while you've been at school. And that's great, Christina. And I wanted to segue to Scott. I mean, as you bring up for as recruiters, I wanted to bring in Scott now to talk about like from a recruiter perspective, what makes a candidate stand out during the hiring process? So uh, there's a, a lot of different things, but I think one of the, the huge benefits with, with Handshake, I'll use that as, a, as an example, is that when you send a resume to an employer, that's at a one snapshot in, in time. And with your Handshake profile, you can actually go and you can update that. So if you gain new experiences, those are the things that we're looking for. It, it allows us to be able to, to filter and to be able to, to broaden our search um, and get to know like the, the folks that we're really looking for to, to hire. But I would say that the key differentiator of when we're meeting with a student, whether it's an internship or for an internship or for a full-time, it's, it's preparation. Um, it really shows when you know um, the types of opportunities that you're interested in, when you are able to articulate the experiences that you've had and what you've learned from those and apply it to, or uh, apply it towards the, the job that you're, you're interested in, that really shows to us as an employer that you've you know, thought it out and you've given it, um, you know, like that you have a high interest in, in the types of roles that we're, we're offering. So preparation is really, I think, key. Um, to being to, to to stand out, and I mean that's a good point, you know, Scott, about standing out. And it goes into my second question to you: is you know, of course, for a student who's really interested in an internship or a full time job uh, in professional service, and as you also talk about in previous conversations with us, you know, some may consider this to be like a consulting. We hear a lot of students saying, "Hey, I would love to be a consultant, especially for Deloitte." You know, what can students expect to work on as a consultant? Or to really make sense now in the new layman's term, professional service, what can students expect when they're trying to get a quote consulting gig? Yeah, so I, I mean, I think one of the things like when we, there's there's two different terms that like we use at, at Deloitte or that we commonly hear. One is the term consulting, though a lot of people say, oh, I wanna be a consultant or I want to consult. Um, and, and we do that in a variety of different things, right? Consulting comes in, in different shapes and, and, and forms. We at a, at a firm like ours, we look at that as, as we call it professional services because we do more than just the consulting aspect of it. Um, we do tax work for, for companies that need you know, in-depth um, help with, with their taxation. They, we do auditing work, we do systems implementation, we do management consulting and change management, going in and, and helping a company um, implement a, a new technology platform or maybe they're reorganizing. All of those things in general are, are considered to be consulting. So it's it's problem solving, and those that um, are able to to be able to articulate experiences that they've had where they've solved a problem, um, they've had to do research, they've had to do analytics to, to be able to make a well-informed decision. Those are the types of things that we're looking for outside of your classes. Like you have your coursework, and then you have like those experiences. And that's really what we're we're looking for when we're taking a look at um, candidates to get into professional services or in consulting. A lot of the times your major will dictate what kind of work that you're going to get to do. But by you know attending sessions like this and, and networking and taking a look at um, types of roles that you're interested in, looking at you know LinkedIn to see if you know anybody in, in your network or your alma mater. Um, it, you know, like that's the, the best thing that you can do is just to really network and, and try to learn as much as possible. All right, thank you, Scott. And this question is from you, Christine. We have uh, someone put it in the chat, it's a few questions. So, uh, you know, we're just take it uh, each question at a time, but a student uh, wrote, I've applied to a lot of full-time jobs. I've been recruited on Handshake. However, not any of them followed up with me about an interview or just rejected me. So the first question is, what do you recommend doing additionally to land that interview or to get hired on Handshake? Uh, and then I go through the other two questions too. Then a person say, and my experience makes me wonder, does receiving a message from a crew even set me up at a disadvantage? Oh, interesting. Great questions. So I think there's a few things to think about. So let me actually take a quick step back. When you are doing a job search, 
you can actually sort of bucket each of the steps into four major steps. Okay. I was a psych major. So bucketing and sort of like clumping are really important pieces to actually remembering all of the various things that you have to do. So the first are your documents, your resume, your cover letter, and now your online profile are really critical key components that you want to sort of like create and start. Your second step is research both at a macro level and a micro level. So macro is understanding the industry that you wanna go into, understanding emerging trends, being able to talk shop about sort of what's happening in that field or that profession that you wanna be able to go into. Micro research refers to the company and the role that you might be applying for or that you might be interested in. And you have to be able to do both. You need to know research. You need to have done your research in both the micro and macro areas to make yourself, yourself stand out as a candidate, okay? Most students make the big mistake of only doing sort of micro research on the company or the role and not on the bigger picture of how or where that company or role sits within the larger landscape. The third step is networking and actually starting to meet professionals within that field in that space. It could be alumni from your school. It could be other young professionals that work at the company, right? It could be a number of different types of individuals, but you wanna start networking because you wanna use those career conversations to learn more about some of the research, right? If I was networking with Scott, I might say I'm really interested in professional services. I'm really interested in consulting. Can you tell me a little bit more about how does Deloitte use those terms one way or another? Do you use it interchangeably? Do you not? Guess what? Now, when I write my cover letter or my resume, I can use the appropriate terms that Scott at Deloitte uses. And I might also network with somebody else at another big four company that maybe uses the terms differently. And I tailor my materials for that firm a little bit differently. And then lastly, the fourth step is actually searching. So then you're actually going to apply for the job on Handshake, for example. Most students make a huge mistake of doing step one, and then they skip right on over to step four. And they sort of miss those middle steps of two and three. So one of the things that I would encourage you to do and think about is reflect on your experience so far. So you've applied for a lot of jobs. Have you done enough of step two and step three? And has that information that you've garnered from step two and step three, have you infused it into step one? Have you used that to tailor sort of your materials when you apply? If you haven't, or you're having trouble with that, go see your career center and have them look over your materials, have them critique your online profile, have them take a look at the messages or communication that you've sent to employers to see if there are any red flags that you might need to fix or you might need to edit. If you are making it into say the first interview, but you're not making it farther than that, it might be a need to do some practice interviews. You might wanna do some mock interviews with your career center or again with a mentor or a faculty member or somebody else that's in the field that can help you with that. So depending on where you're getting stuck, you'll wanna go back and just make sure that there isn't something that's happening there that's actually become a blocker and how to remove that blocker um, in that way. So those would be some of the steps that I would suggest. I'm sure Scott probably has other thoughts or um, or can confirm or deny the things that I just said. <laughs> I will 100% confirm everything that you've said. And I think it's, you know, it's interesting. It's a, it's a two-way street when you're going through um, the, the, the recruiting process. Think of it as a candidate, what it means when you get a personalized message from a recruiter or from a company versus a big blanketed um, message. It's the same thing that Christine was just talking about. When you can customize it and create it so that the terminology or the connection um, that you're making in that cover letter is specific to a firm like ours or a, a, another one using the, the naming mechanisms that they use, it makes a difference. It makes you stand out. It's the same way that it makes you feel different when someone uses your name in a message or specifically calls something unique about you out in the communication. So I think it goes both ways. And that's a, way, that's a good way to kind of think about it. So this question is for both of you. I wanted to, to start it back with you, Scott. You know, what would you say are the common mistakes that students make in a job search? You know, anything that students have, I know we touched upon them just recently, but anything that you feel will stand out that you feel are common mistakes, even in professional services uh, from your lane and just observing working as a recruiter that you see that students are making, especially now with things are changing and evolving, you know, involving, you know, ePro, profiles like LinkedIn, you know, that didn't happen like 10 years ago. What are the things that you feel like students are messing up or making mistakes on that they can avoid? Um, I, it, depending upon like the, the stage you are in this whole career exploration in, in, in job search, but 
you know, really doing like your personal inventory, knowing what your, your strengths are um, and what gives you energy. Like that's really important. Um, don't just uh, be a serial applier to jobs and apply for everything that's out there. Have a reason why you, that job has been of interest to you. Now you may have to do some research. Nobody's expecting you to know everything about it, but <clears throat> knowing what your, your strengths are, the more specific you can be, a lot of the times it's going to be helpful. I know when um, there were times when there were career fairs that we did in person before COVID, but you know, a candidate would come up and they would say, here's my resume. And I would ask, you know, what, what area are you interested in? Or is there a location that you're interested in? And they would always say open. Well, you know, it, it's helpful if you can narrow that down. If there are particular geographies that you want to go to, know why you want to go there. Maybe it's because you're from that area or you've always really enjoyed living on the West Coast or, or you've always wanted to. Um, so know what your, your personal interests are. Um, try to find the requirements out to make sure that you're meeting the minimum requirements. Um, and if not, see if there's other types of jobs that might be out there that you, you could be um, interested in. Practice, and again, I just, I keep going back to this, but practice makes perfect. Um, you can look great on, on paper, um, but then when it gets into the interview, you really need to be able to, to know what your story is and what the experiences are um, to, to help differentiate yourself. Thank you, Scott. I'm oh. sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I was gonna see if Christine had anything to add. Yeah, that's sure, sure. Would you like to add? <laughs> oh, no problem. Hey, this is open dialogue. You know, I, also want, I was going to say this before, Toss and Christina, you know, we are welcoming any questions. So, you know, feel free uh, for any of our participants to get into the chat and to ask questions. But Christine, to piggyback off of that, would you like to add anything to what Scott was saying? Yeah, no, I think Scott's points are really excellent. I can reiterate some of what I said before, which is often students don't do enough research um, to be able to talk shop and to be able to talk knowledgeably. Um, and they also don't do enough networking. And that's super, super important. I also want to just like harp on the networking piece a little bit more. So networking sounds scary to most students. I have literally advised thousands of students and I can't tell you how many times students say, well, I don't really like schmoozing. I'm not really into like just swapping business cards. It feels really awkward to me. Well, yeah, I agree with you on all of those points. And real networking isn't about those things. Real networking is about building a real relationship. So take an interest in someone else, take an interest in their own career path and how they got there. Be genuinely curious about wanting to learn from their experience and what patterns or trends emerged for them that might help you as you think about your path, right? Those are all real ways to foster a real connection and a real relationship. And for students that are on the line that are thinking, well, look, Christine, I have started doing that. Let me just give you, again, some um, context. So for the majority of students that I have advised, for every 10 people that they reach out to to network, they probably hear back from five, okay? So maybe they hear back from 50% of the people that they reach out to. So if you are reaching out to lots of people and you are feeling like not everybody is responding to you, you're not alone, that's normal. People are busy. They might not get a chance to respond right away. They might be getting a million requests and so they can't respond to everybody, okay? So just know that about 50% will get back to you. Of the five people that you speak to, you're probably gonna learn something, at least a little nugget from each of them, but you might only feel like a real connection to maybe one or two of those people. Out of the five, maybe only one or two. So you've reached out to 10 and you're probably gonna walk away with maybe one or two that you really feel like, wow, I might wanna really follow up with this person or I might wanna develop an even deeper relationship with this person. So that is normal. You do not need to put so much pressure on yourself that every single person you reach out to is gonna, gonna become your new best friend. That's not gonna happen. And it's unrealistic to think about it that way. So I think that is, that is very, very key. The other piece too, is if you're nervous about reaching out to a professional like Scott, for example, because you feel like he has so much experience and so much wisdom and you're not quite ready to sort of have that conversation yet, use Handshake to reach out to your peers. So on Handshake, you can actually read reviews that other students have left about their internship experience. And then you can actually message them and talk to them about their internship experience or ask them about what is it like to live on the West Coast? I think I wanna tell employers that I would like to be based out there, but I've never actually lived there, right? So you can use your own peers as practice for some of these career conversations before you move on to actual alum or professionals that are already in the field. Any of that practice is going to be super helpful. So I suppose I'm also reiterating Scott's point about practice. 
And, you know, we, we have a few minutes and, you know, we, we can't thank you enough for you all's time, but I want to ask two last questions, first to Christine and then to Scott. So the first two questions really for Christine would be any insider tips. We know when we tease out this session, we you know want students to realize that they will be able to come to the session and get insider tips. So the, the first question is any insider tips you can provide students that they may not know about for us, handshake. And then lastly, any final thoughts for students? And then for Scott, I wanted to end with you with final thoughts. For Christine, any insider tips you could provide students about Handshake? And then also any final thoughts as you wrap up this session? Yeah, great question. So admittedly, I sort of sprinkled all my insider tips throughout all my other answers, but I will summarize them for you um, here, which is Handshake is more than just a job board. Okay, so you can go to Handshake for more than just looking for and applying to your internship or your job. On Handshake, one of the insider tips is complete your profile. When you complete your profile, you're more likely to be found by employers who are actively searching for candidates. You're more likely to get a message from an employer. So that's number one. The second is you can actually read reviews. We have more reviews than Glassdoor. And so you can get more insider information from students, from your own peers about the experiences that they've had working at some of the companies that I know many of you are interested in. So you can use that. The third is you can actually do peer messaging. So one of the intimidating things that I hear over and over from students is that LinkedIn, you sort of already have to have a network when you go on there. And if you don't have a lot of connections, it's really awkward and it's kind of hard to be able to connect with somebody or to ask somebody if they're willing to connect. On Handshake, the whole point is you don't have to have a network yet. You're using Handshake to start to create some of those relationships. So start with the peer to peer, start with your own students, at your own school, or you can search for students with your major at other schools or geographic locations that you wish to go. You could even look for things like student groups that you might have in common. So start there and start building some of those relationships. There's also something called job roles, job role pages on Handshake, which gives you insight based on first destination data of where students like you have gone on to work. And that gives you information about the role. It gives you information about common geographies of where those roles might be concentrated. And it also gives you basic information about starting salary. So that can also be just good research for you as you continue, um, as you continue on. And then one of the newer features that many of you will experience in the coming sort of six months is something called ambassadors. So employers are able to also create ambassador roles for young alumni or for other people at their companies to be able to reach out to students, to begin to develop a relationship with them, and to begin to help them understand what is the culture of working at this particular company like. So when, if and when you get a message from an ambassador, I hope you'll respond, and I hope you'll start to develop a relationship with some of those ambassadors, because that could be really helpful for you in your own job search and certainly help you stand out from an employer point of view, because they're looking, as Scott was saying, for students who are invested, who are interested, and who are also active engaged as well. And then finally, not an insider tip, but certainly a tip, apply for the positions that you're interested in, because all of them are certainly on, on Handshake as well. So I'll leave it at that. All right, Scott, and for you, final thoughts for our yeah, good, Great, great tips. I, I think, you know, trying to, to find the silver lining of everything that's happened this past year, you know, where everything has gone to, or so much has gone to, to virtual. Um, I think one thing that a lot of um, candidates and students and even employers have realized is, you don't have to limit yourself to just your microcosm, just to your school. There are so many opportunities to network, to be able to attend information sessions. There are leadership conferences. There are um, uh, uh, shadowing events that you can all do virtually. And so that has been a, a blessing in disguise because, I, I mean, you, there's opportunities that are out there that you may not have ever existed. Don't limit yourself to just the employers that may come to your campus. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can, you can do out there. So that's um, one tip. I think the other one is, is make sure, and, and I'm sure your career service offices and others have, have helped you with this, think about like different scenarios and, and experiences that you've had. Think about a time when you've solved a problem. Think about a time when you've been faced with adversity and you've overcome that. Think about a time when your communication skills were able to, uh, to, to help you in a situation. By having a couple of those situations in your back pocket, when you come to an interview and you are asked a question, whether it's a behavioral interview question or if it's something that's uh, involving around like a, a case-based interview, 
you have a, a repertoire of, of situations that you can pull from. And because you're comfortable with them and you've prepared those, you don't have to regurgitate it exactly word for word, but you can pull from that experience. And if you have those, it's much easier to carry that conversation rather than thinking on the spot when you might be a little anxious or your, or your mind is racing. And so that's, a, that's something that I've seen a lot of students uh, get coaching on and it's been very, very effective and it's helped during the interview process as well. All right, thank you so, so much. Well, again, thank you so much to Christine and to Scott. We really, really appreciate this. We hope that our students gained a lot. I know I did, and it's something that will benefit our student population. For those students who are participating, Again, feel free to join us today at the capitalcollab.com community for our Collab Connect, where we are engaged with our students, as well as if you have any questions or want to get more about being a student ambassador or engagement, please reach out to Tasha Washington, uh, as well as to the Collab Greater Washington Partnership.com if you have any questions more. Thank you again, Scott and Christine. We hope that everyone enjoyed this session and we look forward to engaging with you more. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.